Hi everyone, this is Miss Nook, your science teacher. I'm back here behind my little demonstration table to do lab 2.05 with you. And I wanted to show you the materials you're going to need for this lab. This is the dissolved oxygen lab, and I am missing uh, test tubes in my kit, so I'm using these vials that came with the kit as test tubes. Um, I have one of the small beakers that came with the kit. I have a measuring cup with some water and one of the pipettes that came with the kit and I can measure how much water I'm using. I have reagent A, B, C, and D which came with the kit. It's inside your marine and freshwater test lab box. I have a measuring spoon and some yeast. So to get started with this lab, I already, I spilled some yeast, whoops, all right, I already created the control, and the control is what we're going to compare the rest of our samples of water to, and if you notice, I hope you can see the color, uh, it's a little blue, can you see that, and it is matching this card that came with the kit that has a light uh, greenish color to it and a light blueish color to it. We want our water to turn blue. This is our goal in this lab. I'm going to close my mini blinds. Hang on. Ah, much better. Hopefully, you can see that color a little better. I know there's a little bit of a glare. I'm sorry. So I already prepared the control. That's phase one of the lab is making the control. And when you see your lab report, you're going to fill in the data on your lab report for phase one with how many drops of reagent D, as in dog, you used to turn the solution that light blue color. And then you're just gonna set this aside. In phase two, you're going to make a yeast solution, and you can get yeast at the grocery store. If you do, it's very expensive, but you can also find it at dollar stores. And what you need to do is measure out 20 milliliters of water, which I already have done and put into this beaker, and you need a half teaspoon of yeast. You're going to dump the yeast in the water. You don't want the water to be hot. It'll kill the yeast. Yeast is actually alive. It's dormant when it's in the package, but when you add it to water, it becomes active. Yeast is a type of fungus, and it is found in foods that we eat. Then I'm gonna take the pipette and just gently stir the yeast around in the water with the tip of my pipette without squeezing the pipette. I don't wanna get any yeast inside the pipette yet. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and fill up a test tube or if you have to use these little vials that came with your kit a um, with six milliliters of water and so I've already done that I have a, a clean test tube slash vial here with six milliliters of water and for phase two of this lab I'm going to take 10 drops of this yeast solution and put it in the water. This is going to act as our organism in our makeshift marine habitat. So I'm going to take my pipette and I'm going to measure out 10 drops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And what this is going to act like is some pond water with an organism living in it. You want to be gentle with this because the yeast is alive and you can affect it by shaking it too much. Now, after you're done making your yeast solution, you're going to add five drops of reagent A. Oops, I have these backwards. A. These reagents are sources of oxygen. So we're going to one, two, three, four, five. After you do that, you're just gonna gently swirl your test tube for two seconds. 
And then you're going to add reagent B. Five drops. One, two, three, four, five. And you're going to swirl that for two seconds. And then you have to wait two minutes. So while we're waiting the two minutes, let me just talk to you a little bit about this lab. This lab is demonstrating uh, understanding the relationship between waste and dissolved oxygen found in the world's water in our ecosystems. And we're going to learn about eutrophication. Eutrophication is the magic word for this lab. And it is a process that hurts our water systems. When something like a pond or a river uh, becomes eutrophied, that means that it has been contaminated with chemical nutrients, uh, for example, from fertilizer, or excessive nutrients, like too much plant matter, or too much algae, and then what happens is it takes oxygen out of the water so that animals can't breathe, and it doesn't make it a um, favorable place for these organisms to live. In addition, when the organisms are in the water, if there's too many organisms in the water, they're constantly producing waste as well. And that waste uses a large quantities of oxygen. So the more waste that is in water, the less dissolved oxygen is available for the fish and other aquatic life that needs to be in there. So we're trying to demonstrate that by creating an artificial pond-like environment and then uh, polluting it, putting an organism in it and then polluting it and seeing if we can create eutrophication. So we need to measure the amount of oxygen that is dissolved in our sample. Uh, this is the oxygen that's trapped between the water molecules and it is important because without the oxygen fish and other organisms could not survive. So we need um, to measure the oxygen that is available and what's happening right now in our little yeast environment here is those yeast are alive in there and they're doing their thing while they're in there consuming oxygen and they are excreting waste and as the the balance shifts in the water where normally the water is, is balanced the yeast are taking up oxygen so there's going to be less and less oxygen available for other organisms okay so it's been about two minutes so we're going to add reagent C and we're going to add five drops one two three four five and we're going to sh gently shake that for two seconds and wow it already turned a kind of greenish blue hope you can see that now I still have to add reagent D. This isn't blue yet and reagent D we add one drop at a time and count the drops until we see a blue color like what is in our control. And so I already made the control, I already know what I'm looking for. So I'm going to add one drop to my pond water swirl. It's still looking a little green greenish yellow. I want it to more look blue. Swirl it around. It's getting there. Just added two drops. And three. Let's see. And it's looking pretty blue right there. So in my data table on phase two, I'm going to write down that I added three drops of reagent D to my water with the yeast. So in the phase one, it took six drops. In phase two, it only took three. We're going to talk about why in just a second. Now, in phase three, I'm going to take another six milliliters of water. And this is just plain water. And I'm going to add 20 drops of my yeast solution instead of 10. So now I'm adding more organisms to the same amount of water. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Give that a little swirl, get them going. I'm going to repeat the experiment. Reagent A, five drops. Give that a gentle swirl. Reagent B, five drops. Okay. Give that a gentle swirl. And now we have to wait for two minutes. So while we're waiting for two minutes, I just want you to pay attention to the fact that it took six drops for me to make the control, and it only took three drops for me to change the test tube with 10 drops of yeast water to blue. So what do you think it's go is going to happen when I have 20 drops of yeast water mixed in? Do you think I'm going to need to add more or less of reagent D to this to turn it blue. Well, let's think about what's happening. In both of these test tubes, we have the same amount of water. The difference is, is that in the same amount of water, this test tube from phase two only has, let's say, 10 particles of organisms. But in this test tube, we have 20 particles of organisms. These organisms are living, breathing, and creating waste. So what is going to happen when the, there's more in less space. What's going to happen to that oxygen? Think about that. And those yeast are consuming the nutrients in the water and when, as they consume that they're going to create waste, uh, essentially basically letting out waste. I'll just go ahead and say it, they're farting out carbon dioxide and depleting the oxygen amount in the water. Alright, so let's see how much of reagent D it'll take for us to change the third phase to look like this. One drop at a time. That's one. Two, oops, I added reagent D before I re added reagent C. Whoops, totally messed up. All right, let me start that over. I'm rinsing out the test tube. I'm adding just rinsing out that test tube and adding the six milliliters of water adding my 20 drops of yeast again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty we're going to add the five drops of reagent A. Swirl that around. Five drops of reagent B. Swirl that around. And then we have to wait two minutes. I'm going to stop the video here, wait the two minutes, and then start it up again, and I'll be, see you in the second half of this video.